Uh, everyone's heard Merritt's uh, comments, which I, I think uh, are very valid. Uh, I think the expectations for the Thorns are to, to be a team that, that challenges for, for the championship and getting knocked out in Chicago on the road was disappointing. And I, I think, uh, again, going back and saying how and why, it's easy to, in hindsight, saying we could have or should have done things differently. But ultimately, in looking at where we were at the end of the season, we, we wanted to be in the championship. And in all honesty, you know, should have things gone a slightly different way, we could have. And uh, I think the challenges that we faced and the struggles that we had, we need to grow and learn from. But in, in looking at the representation of the Thorns in the community and the brand as a whole, it's phenomenal. And it still leads the way in many, many categories, both in the players that want to join us as an organization, the relevance of the game and driving the NWSL and being a strong talking point within the women's game worldwide. And I think if you take that back a, a, just a little bit and say one of the major positives were that we led our season average and our, our overall attendance for the season led the way in the world with any women's professional sports team. And I think that's representative of, of us as an organization, representative of the, the job that we're doing both on the field and off the field, but also the relevance, relevance of the game within Portland. So. I think they uh, are, are uh, well, that is a very strong point, it's very relevant and it allows us to continue to grow. So from that standpoint, you know, we're optimistic about uh, the direction, we're optimistic about what we think we're, we need to address and, and how to address it. So from my standpoint, we've closed another chapter and now we've got to open the, the way to next year. So from my point, that's, uh, that's just about it. Mark? Yeah, just to, without repeating and, and to build off that, of course, uh, there was there was some extreme positives, the the, the attendance record and, and seeing this, this community and this fan base continue to connect and develop the, str the, the, the strong, unique, loving relationship with this team and supporting through thick and thin, and especially during the World Cup period when we're, we're missing you know, as, as many as anybody else or the most amount of, of international players what we'll be able to achieve as a team in performance and results during that, that period is a huge factor of, of what this fan base, whether we're on the, uh, at home or away, um, the way that that connection is continuing to build is is inspiring. And yeah, there's there's been positives throughout the season. And the way we finished the last five regular season games were nowhere near the standard that we've previously held ourselves to in this in the stretch. It's a part of the season that you've, we've come accustomed to being uh, at our best and flying in all cylinders. Um, the 19 games before that, I thought we did a tremendous job to manage all the challenges. The players specifically did uh, an outstanding job um, stepping up, stepping in, and also growing and developing and evolving the spirit and the culture of the team. But those last five games obviously are going to be sour for a while, and we have to continue to strive and look forward to, to grow and evolve and learn from lessons, starting with lessons from the coaching staff. And then we look at the playoff game. Um, regardless of how the regular season finished, um, because you know it's it's fair to say, well, momentum and the challenges and the way the team was performing, um, not surprising to see that that result. But it is surprising because regardless of how the, the the regular season finished in a knockout game, especially the experience that we have as a staff, we have on the roster, uh, it was a disappointing finish, starting with with me and how we obviously set up to attack that game and adjust it throughout the game. Um, that's a game that we nine times out of ten we should be taken care of and heading to a championship. That's going to fuel us, that's going to fuel us to, to raise the standard and raise the bar in every element of what makes a successful team and in the in the locker room, on the pitch, off the field, continue to raise the standard for us to be able to drive um, and meet the expectations of what this club has in the women's game, not just here but across the world. All right, questions? When you look at kind of the, how the season finished, those last five games and, and getting knocked out in the playoffs, what do you take away from that and learn, especially heading into next year, an Olympic year, um, particularly given that it seems like this time of the season where you guys sort of faded was when you got your national team players back after a big tournament? Yeah, there was. I mean, there was a short period where, let's say, game nineteen, okay, up to up until game nineteen, we we're in fantastic position. So there was still there was a number of, of games after the World Cup period where uh, things weren't looking perfect, and you can tell. The, the mental, emotional, and energy levels weren't perfect. However, the results were still there. The performance needed to continue to improve. But we're scoring goals. We we improved the defensive side incredibly since the beginning of the season, uh, and then and then from 
yeah, game 19 and uh, game yet 19 it, it turned game 19 and game 20 things started to turn there's going to be lessons for the Olympic year I think uh, on the tactical side it's very clear of, of style of play at the beginning of the season and how we evolved during the World Cup period which I think was a huge success in building to the strengths of and, and trying to bring out the best in our players and that final stretch um, whether, whether we're, we're at home or away in that, that, that stretch I think the style of play uh, at times got caught in between what had been successful in different stages of the season and we needed to continue to, to evolve to have a very clear on what, what our expectations were um, in, in attacking and defending against the, the oppositions that have been a bit more consistent in, in the way they, they address the season. Um, and then, so I, I'd say that from my standpoint and then from, from me managing and supporting and us managing the players, the World Cup year is, is a massive calendar 12 month year for the athletes. Uh, and and I think we all we all fell into the trap a little bit of the mentality of our group because we've got some special um, players and their mentality that takes its toll. Uh, I wish I wish I gave them a little bit more time to adjust. Which I, I support them a little bit more at the same time, if they would let me, because they 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 they're very proud of representing this team and being here for this club. Um, so there's lessons there. But I, I I went through this in 2015. I felt like I had huge lessons to take from there that we that we brought into this this World Cup year. It's very different, even though it's similar to an Olympic year. The demands of a World Cup year is is unique. Um, well, obviously we have to learn some more lessons. You know, I don't and I don't think that that journey will will ever stop of of how how you can progress and evolve. But but certainly from our side, number one, being accountable and reflecting and reviewing and some of the things I just discussed. And of course, it's important that everyone does that. Every individual, every player, every staff member, everyone. and that's the period we're in right now. Um, and then, um, I guess maybe more for Gavin, but uh, you, this team has had a lot of continuity in recent years. Mm -hmm. How much roster turnover can we expect this off season, and or much at all? And mm -hmm. uh, what positional needs will the team be going after? Without getting into too many specifics, I, I think. Going back to the season and the number of players that we carried, I think there's a focus on possibly, not possibly, but uh, increasing the, the quality of the foreign spots, making sure that every foreigner that comes in is better than the player that we can acquire domestically. So making sure that our foreign spots go back to the Amandine Henri caliber and making sure that we maximize those in every way. The league continues to evolve and I'm sure there will be or could be. Uh, an evolution of the rules to allow for a, a greater investment in foreigners and I think that will come back to the league and start to benefit uh, every single club that, that's willing to invest. So one, maximizing the foreign spots, there's three foreign spots, four, that we can start to use it should we be able to uh, effectively fill the positions that we need. So I, I think three, four, five starting caliber players and I will not get into the, the specifics of the positions that we need but Obviously, there, there will be quite a, a little bit of a roster turnover, and we've still got the, the main players, some of the best players in the world in their key positions, but again, starting to increase the caliber of the player and, and overall the group. Uh, I think this is a club and this is a team that needs to be in the championship and contesting for trophies every single year, so we need to do what we need to do.